So on this Debaco University video, I'm gonna go over the hope going forward with hoplitin viroid. It's been a lot of doom and gloom. Try to give some positivity here and give you an indication of where this viroid might be trending within the um, industry. All right, so let's go over the hope going forward with hoplitin viroid. Now, question a lot of growers are asking, is it getting worse? And honestly, it's hard to tell. Hard to tell if the viroid is actually spreading or if the awareness is actually spreading and that's resulting in more growers looking for this viroid and actually identifying it and finding it. So are we on an upward trend? Are we on a downward trend? It's really hard to tell. We do have more people looking for it um, and it is quite prevalent. And so that doesn't necessarily mean it's getting worse. It means we're just identifying something that's we that was already there before we were even screening for it. Then again, it stresses the point of testing, screening, and actually looking for it, not just turning a blind eye to this. Uh, so why should I be concerned as a grower? Well, it reduces yields, uh, so that's kind of a concern. Uh, and if that's not enough of a you know reason to be concerned, the pathogen does uh, easily spread. Uh, so that is another concern to both your operation as well as others. And there is no cure for this as well. This is why we need to be mindful of this test for this and cull those plants out as soon as possible so we're not creating more of a problem. Now, being aware is the key part, and that comes through testing. You want to know what to look for, and do not be afraid to test your plants. Don't think, uh, I don't think that's hop latent viroid. Test so that you have uh, uh, to know whether it is hop latent viroid or something else. Carefully tell others, uh, because uh, if you think their plants might be infected or showing symptoms, encourage them also to get their plants tested. And that's, again, if they're showing symptoms in the leaves. Plants can also have high viroid loads in the roots that will then lead to upper portions of the plant exhibiting symptoms. So be aware, testing is very important. Uh, roots and leaves should be tested early on, favor the roots. Uh, older plants, you can test the leaves, particularly the petioles is a good area. Now, this does not mean if you test positive, you're an unclean grower, you know, like the, you know, we saw with all the, you know, unclean, all the leprosy, all the negative correlations with that. If you do have plants that test positive, it is not indication of bad practices. This is a very prevalent uh, viroid. So it's more important to test your plants and know whether you have it so you can remove and implement protocols than to just turn a blind eye to it and kind of uh, spread it to your operation as well as potentially others' uh, operation as well. Now this again comes again with the value of testing, uh, seed testing, clone testing, asking for screening reports. Uh, this is really important if you're bringing plants in. Uh, did they get tested for hop latent viroid? You know, do they have any sort of documentation for that? Is it something, uh, any new plants you get in you should be testing? Your mother plants you should be testing. There's a lot of value in this testing because that really allows you to identify plants early, remove of them, and hopefully by discarding them, you're limiting the chance of it spreading to many of your other plants and hopefully saving your operation. Now, finding resistant cultivars, this would be a great thing. To date, no cannabis cultivars are known to be resistant uh, to hoplite and viroid. Some are in showing potentially what we call tolerance, meaning they're not as severely affected, but still um, succumbing to this viroid. However, remember this is still a new disease being identified, and more cultivars are now, uh, oh, more cultivars um, are aware of this and will be actively seeking potentially uh, having a resistant variety uh, to this. But right now, screening and removing plants is the most effective way. Now, sanitation protocols come along with this. Be aware of your workers, limit contact with known infective plants, know who was around the infective plant, follow sanitation protocols with products that actually work against hoplite and viroid. Alcohols do not work. Basically, your Vercon uh, S and your bleach are really the only two that are really effective, and that's for surfaces and tools. Uh, really hard to clean the actual plant material, so keep that in mind. Resides in the sap mainly uh, and shows high viral loads early on in the roots, but then will spread through the entire plant in only about six weeks. Lastly, this is a problem, but research is ongoing. So sh sharing of information, both at universities and also with companies and getting more people aware, doing research on this is a way we can start to understand this better and hopefully find a way to reduce its spread, to know where it is, to remove those plants and eliminate this from the entire cannabis uh, population going forward.